Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to start my reading vlog for Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. This is the fourth book in my little series that I'm doing this year where I wanted to try five new to me authors and this is number four. Uh, I will link the other three as well if I remember uh, so you can go check them out. But this one I'm very excited for. This is a kind of like sci-fi classic, but not like a, you know, spacey sci-fi, because this has time travel in it. And Octavia E. Butler is a black author as well, and this was published in uh, 1979, the first time. So it is definitely kind of a classic, and I'm very intrigued by it. Uh, in this we basically follow a woman called Dana and I think she time travels back to slavery times from the 70s and she has to decide whether she wants to save her like, what is it, great great grandfather or something like that because uh, he's a white man but if she doesn't save him her family will not exist basically. So uh, yeah, I'm very intrigued by this book. Uh, I've heard that it's super thought-provoking and uh, probably also very hard-hitting. And I will give you quarterly updates to let you know how I get on with it. Hey there, uh, I'm in a hotel room right now. I hope you don't see too much of my mess behind me, but I am now 25% through Kindred. And this book is not holding back. The first 50 pages were so hard to read. Um, yeah, I, I was shocked in a way because yeah, you usually think you get into a story quite slowly, you know, but this one is like all in from the first page. Um, so yeah, we basically follow Dana, who is a black woman in the 70s. She's dating a white man called Kevin and they've just moved into a new house when she starts to feel very dizzy and then she travels back in time to meet one of her ancestors who was a son of a white slave owner. And basically Dana seems to always uh, go back in time when he needs saving. So when he's in mortal danger, you could say. And yeah, yeah, like I don't envy Dana. This is like the most horrible thing that can happen to anyone. It's really stuff of a nightmare. Um, and so, yeah, the first time she travels back is still quite short, but then the second time you already can tick all the slavery boxes. Um, so definitely look up content warnings for this. Um, it's really quite gruesome and horrifying. And yeah, I felt sick to my stomach, sick to my stomach. <laughs> Um, reading those first 50 pages. And now what I found surprising, and this might be a little bit of a spoiler, but we're still talking about the first 25%, so I think it's fine. What I found very surprising now is that the third, third time Kevin actually goes along. So yeah, I find that very intriguing and I'm, I'm yeah intrigued to see how that chapter works out now because I'm right in the middle of it. And at the beginning you also get a glimpse of kind of the ending, so we see what happens when all of this is over and then Dana is telling the story in retrospective, kind of. Um, so yeah, so far I can't say I'm enjoying this, but it is very interesting and very intriguing and yeah, you just have to prepare for a lot. Um, going from the first 50 pages, I'm not quite sure how well I will survive what is coming next, but the whole mystery of what is going on is definitely something that keeps you reading. So uh, yeah, I am kind of excited to keep reading this tonight, and at the same time I'm terrified and horrified, and yeah, slavery was just really, really messed up. Um, so yeah. I've read so many books about it and still I'm shocked, so people are just horrible. <laughs> um, I will update you when I've reached the 50%. So I am back home and I'm also 50% through Kindred. 
This has definitely gotten a little bit easier to read. As I mentioned, the first 50 pages were really quite harsh, but now I'm about 150 pages in and now it is more plotty, I guess. And uh, yeah, the whole mystery of what is happening with the time travel and how everything will work out in the end is uh, yeah just more on the forefront, I guess. And the main character also talks about how shocked she was that you can actually get used to this slavery time. And I think that Octavia E. Butler does a good job of portraying that feeling in the book as well. So also you as a reader do kind of get used to reading about these horrible books and it is kind of done in a way that they're not, yeah, just not described in such a great detail anymore or, yeah, just similar things. Um, so I think that is really quite interesting. Now, I don't want to spoil the plot points, but I think that this second quarter definitely went into a direction that I didn't see coming, especially uh, after the prologue where you kind of get, yeah, just the ending of the story. So um, you already knew a couple of things that must somehow happen, but now it's like really up in the air how it's gonna happen so I think that is really quite cleverly done and it's definitely just such an engaging read like I find myself being really drawn into the book while I read it but at the same time I also still have a feeling that I was expecting a little bit more from this book like this was definitely a five-star prediction for me and I'm really intrigued to see whether the ending will turn it into a five star for me because right now I think it's more a four star feeling but I can totally see uh, the second half of this book turn that around so I, I'm just very intrigued to see how the rest of this story will progress because even though I like where this book went now I do have that weird feeling that it's almost distracting from what I thought would be the theme of this. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I definitely can't put this down and I'm very much enjoying the experience of reading this, even though it deals with like such hard topics. But I think that the plot is just very engaging and I also really, really love the main character. I think she's amazing. Um, Dana is so smart and very compassionate but she has a lot of self-control as well which just makes her a very good character to follow because she doesn't make any stupid mistakes or anything like that and she can't really afford to as well so I really 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 like that um, and yeah I will read some more now I am 75% through Kindred now and this book you guys, this book, I literally can't put it down. Like I had a hard time getting out of my bath uh, because I wanted to keep reading but I definitely need dinner right now. Um, but yeah, this book is so interesting because similar to the main character you get that feeling that you just have to get through for it to be over. Um, so it is very compulsively readable and you just you just want to move on and move on and just want it to be done basically because it is horrifying like there's so much happening in this book that makes me feel sick to my stomach and yeah people are just so messed up but I think this is such a clever book like the idea to take this modern woman Dana and uh yeah send her to uh, this slavery time, I think 1815 is the year, uh, it's just so smart because obviously she can have all the judgment that we would have as a reader if we were sent back to that time. And yeah, it's, as I said, it's just super smart. It also shows so well 
how uh yeah how people are just corrupted by power and by by entitlement um you can see it with uh the guy what's his name rufus how he doesn't feel like the worst person i guess especially when he's a child but you can watch him be corrupted by this system by the power he has by the entitlement he has been taught until he is like the most despicable being in the world and i think it's so masterfully done in this book and i even think dana is a little bit too kind to be honest um I really hope she lets him die in the end. We'll see. Um, but yeah, this is just really well done. Also, what I really enjoy is the marriage of Dana and her partner. He is white. And I think that the portrayal of this biracial couple who is very loving, very supporting, even though he does have his faults, but it's the 70s, you guys. Um... I think it's really good to see that as well as a contrast and there's just this moment um, when Dana asks him about something whether he did it or not um, and he says that he did and oh, it just brought tears to my eyes like he really is a good guy and I really hope that it will stay that way till the end because I really grew to love his character and his relationship to Dana and as I said it's just such a interesting reference point um, to the slavery time and what it does to people so yeah I'm still really really afraid for the main character and I will read the last around 50 pages that I have left now probably tonight and tomorrow so I will give you my final update and I will be glad to leave this book behind but not because it is bad just because it is so horrifying and brutal and yeah just a depiction of how horrible people are. So I have finished reading Kindred today and wow, this was a wild ride. Um, yeah, I'm done with this book. I'm honestly quite speechless. Uh, yeah, because this book is just a lot and I talked a little bit about it yesterday and I feel like my opinion hasn't really changed a lot. So in the end I decided to give it five stars and add it to my favorite shelf because, um, yeah, it's just really, really good. Um, I still thought it would be a little bit more, I don't know, like a little bit more thought-provoking in that it gives you more input to think about, um, like more like on-the-nose stuff. I think that this book is still very much focused on the plot and you have to think about it a lot yourself. So I think that is what I didn't expect, that this is just such a, yeah, such a plot and character focused book and it doesn't really give you a lot of commentary on what is going on apart from what the characters are thinking. And so I thought it would be a little bit more on the nose with the messaging. So. I'm not quite sure if I like that or if I don't like that, but uh, that's something that just was different from what I expected. Now, apart from this, I really love this. I love Dana as a main character. I talked about that before. I did love the relationship of Dana and her husband. And yeah, Rufus was just a creepy little bitch. And yeah, I don't know. Um... I think that his characterization, his involvement throughout the book was done really, really well. And just that um, Octavia E. Butler managed not to paint him in a very good picture, but still because of Dana's connection, um, he's kind of humanized in some instances, um, while Dana herself knows 
that she should not see him as a good person or forgive him for what he's doing. So she's very much torn, but the book itself doesn't paint him in a positive light. So I really, really like that. As I said before, it's just such a good depiction of, yeah, just the corruption of people through power, through their education and the entitlement that they're taught they would have. And yeah, it's just really good. It's just a really, really good book. Like this could be or is considered a modern classic, I believe, but it really reads very recent. I never had the feeling that this was outdated in any way or that the language was hard to understand. It just read very quickly, very yeah, modern and um, there was just nothing I could complain about. <laughs> so I guess that's where the five stars come from. I'm really, really happy that this book kind of lived up to my expectations in the quality, even though, as I said, I expected it to be a little bit more on the nose about things. Um, so I will definitely read more Octavia E. Butler in the future, that's for sure. And yeah. I will probably reread this someday too, even though it's one of those books where while you're reading it, you don't have like a ton of enjoyment because it is just so horrifying. Um, but yeah, that's that's my experience reading Kindred. I absolutely loved it. I did really think that the plot was very engaging and intriguing. And I just, I just wanted to know. <laughs> I just, I had, what's going on there? What's this? I had a very specific thing that I wanted to happen at the end, so yeah, I was just um, I was just reading it to see whether my ending comes true, and I will not tell you whether it does because no, <laughs> you will have to find out for yourself. But I would highly recommend this book. I think it's fantastic, and yeah, I'm so intrigued now to read Octavia e. Butler's other books. So that is book four in my five book series uh, of new authors I wanted to try this year. So there will only be one more vlog in this little series for this year, but that will probably be in the autumn because, uh, yeah, for now I want to concentrate on the series list because I've only so far finished two of the five series I want to read this year. So that's my project for the summer. And then we go back to the last author I want to try this year. So stay tuned for that. Leave a like or a nice comment. If you've read this book, let me know what you thought, whether you liked it, whether it was the way you expected it, um, maybe even some yeah unusual things maybe uh, you felt reading this book. And I would love to hear all about your experience and I will talk to you soon. Bye.